Hello and welcome to our Coastal Field Research Capstone Project video. This semester we have teamed up to isolate and compare protein and enzyme components in snake saliva of non-venomous snakes and venom from well-known venomous species. To begin our project, we first needed to collect saliva samples from a number of different non-venomous snakes. To collect each saliva sample, we opened the mouth of the snake with a specula mouth prop, as pictured here, then sprayed one milliliter of deionized water into the mouth of the snake, and then collected the liquid as it dripped out of the mouth. We were fortunate enough to have access to a variety of non-venomous snakes. Some of these snakes sampled belonged to fellow classmate Shane Smith, and some of the snakes sampled were kept at the GTM NUR. Here you can see us collecting the saliva from an eastern indigo snake that belongs to the GTM NUR. We use a photospectrometer to determine the protein concentration in each of our samples. This machine uses a light beam that passes through each sample. Light absorbance for each sample is directly proportional to the protein concentration. We created our protein standards for this analysis using bovine serum albumin, BSA, as it is a universally accepted reference point for total protein quantitation. Radford Kamasi Blue Reagent was added to each standard and let sit for 20 minutes to allow for proteins to bind. To determine the snake saliva protein concentrations, we combined 100 microliters of it to 3 milliliters of the reagent and allowed it to develop for 20 minutes. Here, Kelsey is weighing out the venom in order to concentrate it to be used for gel electrophoresis. Now we're preparing our samples for loading them into the electrophoresis chamber. We're combining 20 microliters of loading buffer with 30 microliters of eastern indigo saliva. And we have three diluted venom samples, a timber rattlesnake, an eastern diamondback rattlesnake, and a cotton mouth. And we'll be combining 25 microliters of sample buffer with 25 microliters of each venom sample into the gel wells. Here we are heating our samples in boiling water. This process allows for the proteins in our samples to completely denature. As a protein denatures, it unfolds and allows the loading buffer to accumulate within the proteins by coating them with SDS molecules. So this is how we're gonna run our SDS page test. This is the gel we are using to run our venoms and our saliva. We're gonna put it on the one side. And then since we're only running one gel, we're gonna use a plastic from another gel that we ran to prevent leakage when we pour our buffer. So the next thing we're going to do is pour the buffer into these chambers, the one right here and then the one right here. Fill it right to the top and always ensure that there's no leakage into the outside chamber. When you're filling the outside chamber, you wanna make sure that the buffer covers the bottom of the chamber containing the gel. Here's a representation of us loading the wells with 50 microliters of solution. Here's a time-lapse of our samples descending within the acrylamide gel. During acrylamide gel electrophoresis, negatively charged protein samples are pulled by an electric current towards a positively charged electrode at the bottom of the chamber. Smaller molecules migrate through the gel more quickly and therefore travel farther. Larger molecules migrate more slowly and therefore travel a shorter distance. Each one of these gels was run at 150 volts for 40 minutes. The staining procedure that we will be using to stain our gels is called a silver stain. The first step in creating your silver stain, you need to create a development accelerator solution, which is a simple combination of sodium carbonate, um, 25 grams of sodium carbonate, and 475 milliliters of deionized water. The next step in preparing for your silver stain process is creating the fixative enhancer solution, which is a mixture of 120 milliliters of deionized water, 40 milliliters of acetic acid, 40 milliliters of 100% methanol, and 40 milliliters of fixative enhancer concentrate. This clip shows our gel in the fixative solution. Here we are gently agitating our gel in the stained solution, and we will wait about 20 minutes to get some results. 
Here we have our gel, which has been stained with the silver stain. On the gel, you can see the bands here. And what we're doing now is measuring the distance the bands have traveled from the bottom of the well. And this will allow us to determine the size of the proteins and enzymes.